The ninth generation consoles are just months away. But even before the release of the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X, Nvidia reset expectations for 2020 hardware capabilities with their phenomenal GeForce RTX Ampere announcement. The GeForce RTX 3090, GeForce RTX 3080, and GeForce RTX 3070 are all faster than the current frame rate king, the GeForce RTX 2080 Ti opening the door to 4K60 gaming in today's titles and a host of next-generation games in the months and years to come. All three of these cards are also more powerful than either console from Sony or Microsoft. For many people who are considering making the jump to console, this fundamentally changes the equation. The big question now is to get a clearer picture of what these three cards are capable of and whether they're the right option for you. Let's take a look at the top 15 things you need to know about NVIDIA's new Ampere lineup before you buy. They are all very, very fast. At present, the only graphics card on the market that's capable of reliably running most games at 4K 60fps is the GeForce RTX 2080 Ti, a $1200 monster of a card. With NVIDIA's Ampere announcement, the lay of the land has fundamentally changed. NVIDIA promises that the GeForce RTX 3070 is faster than the GeForce RTX 2080 Ti. This means that you can expect 2080 Ti levels of performance from a $499 card. The two other cards, the GeForce RTX 3080 and the GeForce RTX 3090, create an entirely new performance tier, offering between 35-50% to better performance than the GeForce RTX 2080 Ti. Whichever card you pick, you'll be getting a tremendous amount of performance. The GeForce RTX 3090 isn't exactly an 8K gaming card. We'll chalk this up to overenthusiastic marketing folks over at Nvidia, but the GeForce RTX 3090 is not the 8K 60fps card it's advertised to be. So why is that? Well, you'd need something at least twice as fast as the GeForce RTX 3080, not just 15-20% to 20 faster, to reliably achieve 8K 60fps in most AAA titles. 8K isn't twice the pixels as 4K, it's four times. And sadly, we're just not there yet, unless all you plan on doing is running Fortnite without RTX or Valorant. On the other hand, all three Ampere cards are incredible 4K performers, and to be honest, 4K looks phenomenal, so that's not even remotely a deal breaker. The GeForce RTX 3090 and GeForce RTX 3080 are built on one GPU, while the GeForce RTX 3070 is built on another. Both the GeForce RTX 3090 and GeForce RTX 3080 are built on the gigantic GA102 GPU. The GeForce RTX 3090 features GA102's full complement of 10,496 CUDA cores, while the GeForce RTX 3080 is slightly cut down with 8,704 cores. This is approximately a 20% drop in shader performance. Memory bandwidth also sees a 20% drop, with the RTX 3080 running 19 gigabits per second memory across a 320-bit bus. The GeForce RTX 3070 is built on a different, smaller GPU, the GA104. GA104's capabilities are substantially toned down. The fully enabled version features 5,888 shader cores, a substantial drop from the GeForce RTX 3080, and 512 gigabytes per second of bandwidth due to its 256-bit memory bus. For all the advertising, what this basically means is that the GeForce RTX 3090 and RTX 3080 are more or less in one performance tier. We expect the RTX 3080 to substantially close the gap with overclocking. While, on the other hand, the GeForce RTX 3070 is in a lower performance tier, alongside the 2080 Ti. All three Ampere cards feature double the CUDA cores, but that doesn't necessarily mean double the performance. With Ampere, Nvidia managed to pack in two times the FP32 shader cores as with Turing. However, TI did this by making each shader core multi-purpose, meaning that there are no specific INT cores. What does this necessarily mean? Well, it means that technically, yes, the number of shader cores has increased by a factor of two. However, because of INT workloads still exist, and because other aspects of the GPU, like memory bandwidth, haven't doubled, Ampere GPUs don't deliver twice the performance in terms of shader core count. 
In other words, the Ampere GeForce RTX 3080 isn't twice as fast as the GeForce RTX 2080 Ti, despite having twice the CUDA cores. It is, however, at least 30% faster, going by Nvidia's benchmarks. Accordingly, the GeForce RTX 3090 is expected to only be 50% faster, despite featuring over 10,000 shader cores. This isn't a bad thing, because Nvidia's managed to nearly double performance by performance tier. The GeForce RTX 3080 is indeed nearly twice as fast as the GeForce RTX 2080, though it achieves this by having more than double the GeForce RTX 2080's 2,944 shader count. Ray tracing will be faster on all Ampere cards. NVIDIA utilizes second-generation RT cores in all three Ampere GPUs. So what does this mean in terms of performance? Well, the first-gen RT cores in Turing accelerated ray tracing substantially over shader-based ray tracing in Pascal. However, there was still a massive performance penalty involved in Turing RTX on. NVIDIA claims a nearly two times improvement to ray tracing capabilities with Ampere. We expect this to mean that the performance hit of RTX effects will likely be lower than before. With Turing, ray tracing could cut performance by as much as 50% in some situations, making games simply unplayable at higher resolution. With Ampere, a 20-25% performance hit could mean that a number of high-profile ray tracing games could run well at 4K, at least on the GeForce RTX 3080 and GeForce RTX 3090. All three Ampere cards support HDMI 2.1. If you recently bought an HDMI 2.1 compatible TV, and we recently covered a list of our favorite picks, you'll be able to make excellent use of it with an Ampere graphics card. All three Ampere cards support HDMI 2.1. This means that they'll work on displays capable of outputting 4K 120Hz or 8K 60Hz. While 8K displays aren't exactly mainstream, and while none of these Ampere cards is genuinely fast enough for 8K, this is a nice-to-have feature. Third generation Tensor Cores could make DLSS 2.0 work even faster. NVIDIA's solution to Turing's ray tracing woes was DLSS, an AI based image upscaling method. DLSS 1.0 had questionable quality benefits. In earlier titles, it actually performed worse than normal resolution upscaling, while also delivering worse image quality, a lose lose situation. DLSS 2.0, however, was a dramatic turnaround. In games like Death Stranding, enabling DLSS boosted performance while actually improving image quality over native rendering. DLSS still has a performance hit, or rather there's a limit to its performance boost. With improved Tensor Core capabilities, Ampere cards are expected to deliver excellent DLSS 2.0 image quality in upcoming games like Cyberpunk 2077 while offering an even greater performance boost. Touring card prices are expected to come down significantly. If you're in the market for a second-hand card, this might actually be an interesting time to get your hands on a lower-end Touring card, especially if you're not gaming at 4K. GeForce RTX 2080 Ti prices have crashed precipitously on the second-hand market. However, we still think this part makes a poor choice, considering the GeForce RTX 3070's $500 price point. On the other hand, we expect that you'll be able to snag touring cards like the GeForce RTX 2070 Super in the $200 to $300 range. If you're gaming at 1080p or 1440p, this represents immense value. You'll be able to run just about every AAA game at 4K 60fps with the GeForce RTX 3080. Yes, even Red Dead Redemption 2. The GeForce RTX 2080 Ti was the first card this generation to comfortably deliver a 4K 60fps experience in most titles. The GeForce GTX 1080 Ti did so as well, but games have gotten substantially more demanding since 2016. However, there are still a number of games that confound even the GeForce RTX 2080 Ti at 4K. This is where that 30-35% to performance boost from Ampere comes into the picture. Any game that runs in that 50 to 60 FPS range on the GeForce RTX 2080 Ti, such as Red Dead Redemption 2, should comfortably hit 60 FPS on the new Ampere card. This means that you really will be able to crank those settings up and forget about tweaking them, at least until the next wave of 9th generation titles arrive. RTX IO can massively boost your load times and throughput, if you have a speedy SSD on hand. 
Both Microsoft and Sony have spent a lot of time talking about their high-speed bespoke SSD-based storage solutions for their ninth generation consoles. The PS5 in particular is supposed to deliver an effective bandwidth of nearly 9 gigabytes per second. This is double the nominal throughput of the SSD Microsoft's using, and it's thanks to a bespoke decompression solution. With RTX IO, Nvidia aims to offer the same kind of experience to PC users. RTX IO enables Ampere cards to do decompression by themselves, taking the CPU out of the equation and potentially speeding up load time and LOD transitions by a factor of two. With next-gen titles expected to lean heavily on the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X's storage capabilities, this should help Ampere gamers significantly. Aftermarket cards are on the way, and there are differences with the Founders Edition. NVIDIA's Ampere Founders Edition cards are things of beauty. However, at the end of the day, they are a reference design, and it's always possible to get better performance from AIB cards. The suggested price points for Ampere are for NVIDIA's reference design. However, board partners like Zotac and Asus are working on custom AIB cards like the Zotac Amp Extreme GeForce RTX 3080 that promises faster performance and superior cooling. If you're willing to pony up a $50 to $100 price premium, those AIB cards should net you better performance. Be prepared for price hikes and limited availability. Thanks to Ampere's unprecedented gen-on-gen -gen performance gains, we expect reference cards plus all but the most premium AIB designs to sell out very quickly. This means that availability of all three Ampere cards is likely to be very limited after the first couple of days on sale. This could push prices up substantially. Infamously, the GeForce RTX 2080 Ti had a suggested price of $999. However, a combination of low availability and price inertia meant that it sold for $1,200 for most of its lifetime. Be prepared for the prospect that Ampere cards might sell for substantially more than their recommended pricing. You might want to upgrade your power supply. Ampere cards are ferociously power hungry. The GeForce RTX 3090 features an unprecedented 350 watts TBP, while the GeForce RTX 3080 sucks up 320 watts of power. To put this into perspective, that's just 25 watts less than the dual GPU NVIDIA Titan Z. This means that your current PSU might not be able to handle the two higher-end Ampere cards. If you're buying the GeForce RTX 3070, the 220 watt TDP should play nice with 550 watts and better PSUs. However, with the two higher-end cards, we suggest getting yourself a 700 watt or better PSU. Yes, that's an additional investment, and you'll want to factor that in for your total cost. Ampere features a new power connector design, but an adapter is included. NVIDIA is providing an adapter along with Ampere cards to convert your dual 8-pin outputs into its 12-pin. We expect PSU vendors to release new PSUs with 12-pin adapters in the months to come. However, as long as you have a 700 watt or faster modular PSU, you won't have to worry too much about compatibility. As mentioned though, you should still consider a PSU upgrade to make sure you can actually run these cards. The GeForce RTX 3080 is faster than you think. Nvidia typically differentiates card tiers with a substantial difference in performance. The GeForce RTX 2080 Ti, for instance, is 30 to 40% faster than the GeForce RTX 2080. No amount of overclocking is going to overcome that difference. However, and much like what we saw with the GeForce GTX 970 and GeForce GTX 980, the performance gap between the GeForce RTX 3080 and GeForce RTX 3090 is smaller than usual. There is a 20% deficit in terms of both shader core count and bandwidth, and yes, at stock, that should translate into a 10 plus FPS differential. However, from what we know about Turing and Ampere clock speeds, both of these parts are good for 2 GHz plus on the core clock. This means that 10% gains are viable with the GeForce RTX 3080, narrowing that gap substantially. At stock, yes, there is a performance difference, but it's most certainly not worth two times the increase in price. And that about does it for this video. If you enjoyed what you watched and want to see more from Gaming Bolt, you can always hit that subscribe button and turn on the bell icon next to it. That way you will never miss any of our videos.